So your doctor's told you that you have bilateral knee arthritis and you need knee replacements. And now you are in the middle of this big decision whether or not to do both at the same time. We call that simultaneous bilateral knee replacements or whether or not you should separate them by three to six months, what we call staged bilateral total knee replacements. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you all of the important information that I share with my patients to help them make this difficult decision. So stay tuned. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm Adam Rosen. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button below and click the thumbs up button so people like you that are looking for information like this can find it. So again, in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about bilateral knee replacements. What I discuss with my patients when we're dealing with whether or not to do one knee or two knees. Now, the thing that a lot of people are afraid of is that if you have one knee done, they think I'm destined to have the other knee done. And that's not true. One study found that the risk of having the second knee replaced in 10 years was only 50%. So that means that a lot of patients are never going to get the other knee done. And you don't just get the other knee done because we're there and in the operating room. You know, I explained to my patients that it's completely different than when the mechanic says, hey, we're changing your oil while your car is up on the rack. Would you like us to rotate your tires? This, when we talk about total knee replacement, is completely different. This is like two full engine rebuilds. This is one major operation followed by another major operation. So if you're thinking of having both knees done, what I have my patients do is tell them to split themselves in half. I say, pick your left half and pick your right half and decide that if you were seeing two different doctors on two different days, would your pain and symptoms be severe enough on your right half and your left half to have knee replacement done on both. If not, if one is bad and the other one you think, no, it's not that bad, I wouldn't have a knee replacement, do not get bilaterals. Do not get one done if you're not having pain and symptoms and de decreases in your quality of life. But in the instance that you have severe arthritis and severe pain in both knees, then you might be a very good candidate for simultaneous bilateral total knee replacements, both knees done at the same operating room setting. Now, what about age? You know, I have a lot of patients that say, you know, I'm getting older and I'm having one done. I don't want to have to have the other one done when I'm older. And again, everything that I just told you, that still applies. The next thing that I explained to patients is we've looked at this and we've found that your risk does go up when you're 90 years old. So for my patients that are in their 60s or 70s or 80s, Waiting a year or two or three does not mean that you're going to have a significantly higher medical complication rate, unless something happens in your medical history. We actually did a study looking at patients in their 70s, patients in their 80s, patients in their 90s. And what we found is that whether or not you're in your 70s or 80s, the medical complication rate was the same. And if you're over 90, you had a three times greater risk of having a medical complication, like a stroke or a heart attack, pneumonia, urinary tract infection, but interestingly enough, orthopedically, the outcome of the knee replacement surgery, whether or not you're in your 70s, 80s, or 90s, was completely identical. So there was no harm in waiting if you were older from an orthopedic standpoint. So again, if you're considering bilateral knee replacements, you should have severe arthritis. You should have severe symptoms. You should have failed conservative care. And then you might be one of the minority of patients undergoing bilateral total knee replacements. Because interestingly enough, only 4 to 6%, 4%, up to 6% of total knee replacements done in the United States are bilaterals. So that just shows you that almost 95% of patients having knee replacements are having one done at a time. So there's pros and cons. Now the pros for a lot of patients is that you only have one surgery. You have one set of office visits, one set of pre-op visits, one anesthesia, one hospital stay, one surgery, and you're done. Both knees are replaced. The other pro is that you have one rehabilitation. You know, you have to go through therapy. You're working on one knee. You might as well work on the other knee, but you get the therapy done at one time. So taking that into consideration, overall, your recovery is shorter. So for people that want to get on with their life, 
or get back to work, they might do surgery and have rehab and be back to those things within three to four months. Whereas if you do one followed by the other one, you're looking at six months or more of time out of work or time out of rehab. And the last big pro that I tell my patients is that people are going to think you're a rock star. You know, if you had the strength and willpower to go through having both knees replaced at the same time, most people are going to think that you have an extremely high pain threshold and you're super motivated. And that is something that I look for in my patients. So I rarely bring up the idea of doing both at the same time unless there's a severe deformity, which I'll get into later. But when patients walk in the door and are motivated and asking the question, you know, can I do both at the same time? I want to get this done and over with. I'm already super active. I don't want to be laid up for too long. That usually indicates a patient that, again, has the motivation to do the intense physical therapy and rehabilitation to get a successful outcome when we replace both knees at the same time. So those are the pros. What are the cons of doing both at the same time? Well, number one is a longer anesthesia time. We're doing two knee replacements. So the surgery is twice as long. The anesthesia is twice as long. And some people do have some effects from the anesthesia. The second thing that we worry about is blood loss, that you lose a little bit of blood when you have one knee replaced. And with medications and treatments today, the risk of a blood transfusion is less than 1%. But if you have both done at the exact same time, your bleeding risk is double. So that means that you're at a slightly increased risk for needing a blood transfusion. But even if you don't need a blood transfusion, your blood count is going to be lower than normal. And this can lead to low blood pressure, dizziness, fatigue, and it can make it difficult to do physical therapy. The other thing that we found, we did a study finding that patients that went to a rehab facility after having both knees done had a slightly increased risk of blood clots. Um, but the other issue and the thing that a lot of patients are concerned or fearful of is not having a good leg to stand on. So we look for patients that are highly motivated but also very fit, young, and healthy because they need the strength and stamina to be able to get up after having both knees replaced and walk. You know, even with a walker and with a physical therapist, for many patients, it can be difficult when you have both knees replaced. So we want to make sure that you have both the physical and mental wherewithal to tolerate the recovery after having both knees done at the same time. So there are certain instances where I recommend having both done at the same time. So when would that be? Um, number one, and again, most important, highly motivated, healthy, young, active individual. They have the mental and physical capacities to do both at the same time. But the other group of people are patients with severe deformities. We have some patients that have a severe knock knee or bow legged deformity or what we call a flexion contracture where the knee won't straighten all the way. And if we do one knee at a time, because the other knee is so crooked, it affects their ability to participate with physical therapy and get a good outcome. So in that particular instance, I normally do recommend or talk to patients about considering doing both at the same time. Now, if you need both and we can't do both at the same time, we call it a staged bilateral. And typically we would do this three months after the first knee. Some patients choose to wait longer. Like a lot of my teachers have one knee done in the summer and they wait a year because they have off in the summer to do the second knee. Now, the downside is that you have two surgeries and two three-month recovery periods, uh, but there are some upsides. So one of the upsides that I see with many of my patients is that the second knee is easier. You know, we do the operation, but you've already figured out how to do the physical therapy. You have a good leg on the other side to walk on and stand on. You know how frequently to ice. You know how to navigate your house, how to walk with a walker, how to transition to a cane. So many people find that the second knee is actually easier. Now, are there patients that should not have both done at the same time? Yes. Um, patients that are elderly, patients that have multiple medical um, conditions and problems that can complicate their recovery probably should not be doing both at the same time. We can decondition patients. We have a lot of patients that don't have a lot of strength or stamina, so it's really hard for them to participate in physical therapy after having both knees replaced. Uh, and weight can be an issue, both overweight and underweight. So actually studies have shown that patients with a BMI over 35 or 40 actually have a higher risk of complications like blood clots and infections. But interestingly enough, significantly underweight patients, patients that have a BMI under 18, are at even a higher risk of complications. So sometimes we have people lose weight, but sometimes we actually have patients that need to gain weight to be an optimized surgical candidate. 
Well, the honest truth is it can be very difficult for us as surgeons to pick the perfect candidate for doing both at the same time. I, over the years, have had patients that have wanted bilaterals, and I was really against the idea, but they were strongly um, in favor of doing both at one time for one reason or another, and they did great you know, against what I thought would happen. Um, but on the other side of the coin, there are other patients that I thought were excellent candidates for having both done at the same time, and they really struggled. So the reality is we don't have a perfect metric on how to choose who's going to be the best patient for having both done at the same time. Now, what I think data will show going forward, again, only four to six percent of people are having both done at the same time, but I think that number is going to go down and down and down. Why? Because more and more knee replacements are being done at outpatient surgery centers. And currently, I don't know any surgeons that are doing bilateral knee replacements as an outpatient. So as more and more of these procedures are done as an outpatient, you're going to see even less and less of these done as a bilateral. So it's a lot of information. Um, I talk to my patients about this when the topic of having bilateral knee replacements come up. And I'm sure many of you probably have a lot of these same questions if you're in that situation. So I really hope that this information at least helps you make a better informed decision if you're considering knee replacement and if you're considering bilateral knee replacements, doing both knee replacements at the same time. If so, I wish you luck. And thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. And until next time, I'm Adam Rosen. Stay safe.